Hi everyone, it's a pleasure for me to welcome you to this session today. It's so good to see that so many of you have followed our invitation to this session and that you are joining today's webinar about modular process automation with the Xenon and MTP. My name is Bernhard Gorten and if I'm not driving the ambulance car in my spare time, I take care about making your life easier in the life sciences and process industry with our software platform Xenon. As we really have a tight time schedule, let's start right away. What do we have prepared for you guys today? We have prepared a journey from generating MTP files towards orchestrating them and see a real control system and finally a real customer project of a big end user in Germany. So we take care about the following questions. What are the new trends in the process automation? What is this module type package everybody speaking about, the MTP? And how does Xenon support it? We have a really nice live demo. We will show live how easy this could work to integrate some equipment. And of course, this is not just some slides and some theoretic standard. MTP is real. We have realized already a big project with a large end user in Germany based in uh, application of laboratory and mini plant. And then, of course, we will have some time to answer some questions you might have. Please take care. If you have some questions, put them in the chat. I will take care about them at the end of the session. Today speaking with me, it's a very international event, I have to say. Speakers from Italy, Germany and Austria. Let me start with my two colleagues uh, based in Salzburg at the Copa Data headquarters. It's Herbert Oberauer and Matthias Lackner. Both are from the professional services team. They are our masterminds and developers behind our MTP software solution. Good to have you on board, guys. Let me move on with Christoph Franzke. Also good to have you on board, Christoph. He's sitting in Germany. He's a senior technical consultant for key accounts, taking care about large customers also in this area. Good to have you here. And finally, my nice colleague from Italy, Giuseppe Minin. Together with Giuseppe, we take care about the life sciences and process industry at Copa Data headquarters. Giuseppe is also a member of the ISBE Special Interest Group for Pharma 4.0 in the Plug and Produce Working Group, and also in GAMP Italy in the Connected Machines Working Group. Giuseppe, now I think it's time to hand over. We start right away with the next topic. So. Uh, what does the modular production mean? What is the current trends? And of course, please explain us what is this MTP everybody is talking about? Stage is yours. Thank you. Thanks, Bernard. Uh, and also a warm welcome from, uh, from my side. Uh, it's a pleasure for me introducing uh, what I consider one of the most interesting evolution in, uh, in process automation. Uh, MTP and modular production. Uh, but in order to answer to this question, let me let me start with uh, an, an, a funny picture. Maybe uh, some one of you, where we were we were teenagers in the 80s, we remember uh, that kind of uh, uh, computers. I have here my my first computer. Maybe you remember the Commodore 64 was my First computer, that time you remember the integrating monitors, floppy disk or printers wasn't an easy task because of dedicated interfaces, specific uh, communication protocols. And uh, of course, every vendor has a different integration, different communication. Uh, so when you have to buy a new printer, for the Commodore 64, you need to remember, okay, what is now the, the current uh, protocols I have to buy, I have to use, uh, and so on. But if we go now to the, the, the current desk we have in our, in our offices, the situation is completely different. When I'm back in the office, I simply plug my USB cable on my, on my laptop, and automatically the laptop recognizes the monitor, the web camera, the keyboard, the mouse, um, you know, all the peripherals I have. So independently from the vendor, so independently from uh, what is the monitor brand or the, the keyboard or, or, the, or the webcam. We call it plug and play. So thanks to this, we have a real interoperability. 
if now with this example in mind, we move to a process automation and we see this picture we see here on the, on the screen, we see our classical stainless steel process equipment. How this is done from the automation point of view? Typically, we have a top-down engineering approach. So basically, we have a, a centralized system based on DCS or based on SCADA and PLC, where we connect from a single control system all the equipment. And typically, we have fixed connection, piping, and so on between different, uh, different systems. And typically, we have vendor-dependent automation. So interoperability is not an easy task. But of course, if we now move from classical approach to the new trend, new request in biotech, and for example, in cell and gene therapies, where we need the small batch size, where we need the individualized drug substance, for example, and so different process flow according to the different drug substance we need to produce, we need a different approach. So I think this picture will represent the current evolution in biotech. So we have today the ballroom concept, we have today a mobile production model. So if we compare from the right to the left side, from the right side, we see that we simply cut the equipment in pieces and every piece is autonomous. So as a local automation, as a local control system, and we are able to simply plug and unplug module in order to recombine, as I prefer, my, uh, my line. According to this, um, what is modular plant engineering? So according to this picture. So basically, if we see here our standardized process module, um, and the, Every module, like the filter we see here, the bioreactor and the doser system, is a standardized process module. So we divide the processing steps, as we see here. We create a common um, behavior, a common interfacing between different modules from a mechanical point of view and from the digital point of view, of course, so that we can easily create a sort of orchestration on top of this module and the orchestration level is able to detect what model I have um, under me and is able to read the information coming from the models and is also able to command every model he has. We call it exactly orchestration. But once the, the batch is finished, it's quite easy for me to uh, rearrange, readapt uh, the, the, the models uh, I, need, uh, I need to use. Um, so let's imagine I am uh, a process engineer and uh, I need to create uh, my specific workflow. So I simply uh, rent from my, let me call it, uh, uh, catalog of module I have in my facility. I use the module I need, I plug it, I orchestrate it, and I start producing. This is essentially the idea uh, we have. According to this uh, concept, uh, Namur, an association we will see later on, uh, um, states that uh, we have uh, a sensible, sensible reduction of time to market by 50%, reduction of production cost by 40%, but very important is the increasing of flexibility, as you can see here, 80% more in flexibility. Let's imagine the process engineer that created this uh, uh, production flow, and now he needs to move the production from this R&D lab to a different location, maybe in another country, or maybe you need to increase the size of the production. So it's quite easy with this modular concept to unplug a system, mount a new, a new system, and then uh, send the modules or buy directly there the modules uh, because it is definitely interoperable. Of course, this is the advantages, but we also have challenges because uh, this uh, approach, of course, has some challenges. First of all, is the interoperability. So independently from the vendor of the automation, the, every module must speak a common communication language. And every module should offer a, a similar, a common description of the capabilities he has. 
this is of course a must in this case. And second point, the process orchestration. We can't afford to ask uh, for an automation team every time we need to rearrange uh, the orchestration, the module configuration. This is of course uh, another important topic. So we need an easy approach for the process orchestration, for example, using graphical tools. And then as we are in uh, life sciences, as we are in a regulated environment, we need to take care to an important aspect like data integrity. So collecting electronic records and store in a proper way electronic records in my process orchestration. And of course, we need also to comply with the GMP regulation. So documentation and validation is also another important topic. And last, it's important also to consider the request we receive from the from the market from our customer like uh, shall i reuse my existing module in this new approach of modular production so shall we, are we able to take care to brownfield configuration to brownfield uh, applications in order to answer to these challenges let's now answer to the second question so what is mtp modular type package and uh, let me say that the MTP is exactly the foundation of modular plant engineering, according to this plug and produce approach. So basically, MTP is a, a formal description of production model, vendor independent, so independently from, uh, from the vendor. This concept uh, has been defined by and promoted by, by Namur, an association of the uh, a company in the um, processing industry, process automation industry, and today is an uh, international norm. You can, you can, uh, you can use, of course. We don't have time, of course, to explain the complete norm in this webinar. Let me simply offer you a quick overview to the three main components we have uh, in the MTP. The first one is the pair. So the we see here the production modules we have here on the lower level. For example, one type of payer is this dozer. This dozer offer me three different services and um, we, it is basically uh, the capability as this dozer. Then we have uh, a, react, a bioreactor, for example, and so on. Every model is plugged to this pole. Pole stand for, stand for process orchestration layer. And this level is responsible for connecting every pair. Orchestrating, orchestrating means connect together in a process flow the modules and then produce, start the application. And the third component is the MTP description because the MTP description is exactly the, um, the modeling of every module in order to be able to understand what is the capability of the model. So three components, MTP description, pair, and poll. Let's start with the MTP description. So the MTP manifest is also, it's also called MTP manifest. It is basically an XML file, an XML file that uh, describe uh, the functions, uh, the procedure, the, the model can perform. Then what process data I can share, including the critical process parameter, for example, I need to share with the poll. And then how should I look like? So when uh, the poll uh, import me, how can represent my PIND, for example, and then other information like alarms and so on. The file can be easily interpreted by a computer because it, it is an XML file. The second component is the pair, so the process equipment assembly. So what is it? It is basically a, a mechanical component, then we have a local automation because the pair is independent from the, the pole from the other. So we have a PLC, for example, here. And then the pair, as we said, can provide specific services according to the capability. And then we, we can have a local HMI in order to monitor and control locally the pair. And then we have the communication with the pole, so an OPC UA communication with the, the upper level system. And of course, we have the MTP description, so the MTP file. And here we have, from the engineering point of view, a very important difference between the centralized approach and this modular approach. Here we have an engineer that is responsible for the automation for the pole only. 
he doesn't know, he doesn't care what is the final destination of the model. He simply creates the automation and the services and the, the MTP description for this specific file. And uh, he created the documentation and he can pre-validate the model in order to be delivered as a package to the port. This is essentially the idea of the modular engineering. The third component is the port, the process orchestration layer. It is a, a software platform that where you can import and orchestrate the pair together. And then you can finally monitor and control every pair using this case OPC UA. So you can control command every specific services. And then important, in order to, to comply with the data integrity, it should be able to generate and store in a proper way electronic records like batch, batch information, process value, alarms, and audit trail. From the engineering point of view, the process orchestration layer, of course, must be managed by a process engineer and not by an automation team, as I, as I said before. So, should be driven, this process should be driven by a graphical tool, an, an easy tool. And of course, these tools should also provide me documentation in order to create the right documentation for my orchestration layer. So summarizing uh, what we have here, we have here the engineering steps uh, divided, as you can see, between module engineering. So we have here an engineer that uh, provides the automation for this specific module and uh, so the PLC programming, for example, and then, of course, create, generate the MTP file. And then, separated, as you can see here, we have another people that is uh, responsible for the plant engineering. In this case, these people, uh, using this nice picture from Dresden Technical University, has, for example, to use uh, four modules, module A, B, and C different PLC types, as you can see here, but what they have in common, they have in common the MTP description and they have in common the communication via OPC UA. So it's able to, to plug every module, to orchestrate the modules, and finally to produce the application. So this is exactly the engineering steps we have to do. But now is the time to understand how a company like Copa Data is able to support MTP and process automation because the Copa Data since the foundation believes strongly in openness, interoperability, and hardware agnostic. So now I want to ask to Bernard, to my colleague, how Copa Data support modular process automation and MTP? Bernard, and over to you. Giuseppe, thank you very much for giving us a nice introduction about process industry in general, process automation, what are new trends, where are they moving to, and giving us a nice introduction. I know it's a, it's a big standard, but basically understand what is MTP and why this is so important and why it helps us in this area. So as you probably know, Copa Data and Zenon, we are now on the market since more than 30 years. And from the beginning, it was our goal to really help our customers and make your lives easier. And one part of this goal, of course, is a modular automation concept. So we are working on modular automation since the beginning when we started developing the software platform Xenon. So for us, this is now the logical consequence that we also take a closer look at the MTP standard and that we also provide a really convenient solution for you guys out there. So what have we prepared? What have we done to help you to really uh, jump on the train uh, of MTP. We have developed an MTP suite and the MTP suite covers all the different tasks you might have during the entire MTP lifecycle. Let me start with the MTP editor first, which is a kind of graphical tool helping you designing your, as we know now, your MTP template files for your equipment, for your skits, for your package units. So also for end users and for equipment providers, this might be helpful because equipment providers, you might deliver or you want, might deliver in the future MTP ready equipment. So it's easy by using this MTP editor to get this MTP description uh, ready also for your equipment, but also for end users. It could be uh, 
a nice benefit to check MTP files that have been delivered with your equipment. Modify MTP files, open it, edit them. In the same time, which is, we all know, very important also in, in pharmaceutical life sciences, uh, there has to be some kind of validation. And also as a start, if you want to start doing MTP development, we have included a really cool validation service, which is uh, done live during the editing in the editor. So you get live notifications if there is any error, if there is any warning, if there is something not compliant to 2658, and you immediately can fix it right away. After that, as we know, we have some PEAs. So we have some physical equipment we then want to integrate. And this equipment is based on an MTP template we have now generated in the editor. Now we create instances for each of my physical equipment. And those in instances then are connected in the process orchestration layer, which again is a, is a very nice graphical interface, helping you by just simply drag and drop your equipment to the system. You logically can connect it. You can design the HMI layout if you want, and then you just click a button. And basically, you can start your control system and you can start monitoring your equipment. Additionally, out of that, of course, we also provide a kind of software suite for equipment suppliers. As we know, Coporata and Xenon, we're on the market since more than 30 years, and a lot of customers of us are global leading machine builders. Some examples in the life sciences, pharmaceutical areas like Groninger Haare, Höfliger, Bausch & Strübel, Scan, Syntigon, Isolators. So there's different kind of machines which are using Xenon locally as HMI on their machines. So yes, we also can support you guys as equipment suppliers. We have the right software suite for you to for local monitoring and control. And in the end, you might ask yourself, I have a lot of existing equipment. Do I really need to buy new equipment to be compliant to MTP? No, you don't, because we developed as well an MTP gateway. So it's a very easy way to integrate your legacy protocols, your legacy hardware, your legacy equipment you might have. But now, let me move on with an important topic, which is the validation. The validation is included in the, in the MTP editor. So if you don't have this editor already, we have uh, created a solution also for you guys because there is an online service available, which is free of charge. So everybody can use it and you can check your MTP files you have developed on your own, you have gotten from a third party provider. So it's very easy. You just put in first name, last name, email address, then you upload your MTP files. Then there is a checkbox if you allow us to use or to have a look at your MTP files or not. Otherwise, we uh, just delete it right away. So we want to help PA suppliers to really get their equipment MTP ready, but also end users checking quality of existing MTP files, for instance. If you just follow the URL, presentation will be sent out afterwards as well. Uh, you get access to the online validation tool. Simply upload it, then you get a validation, a completed message. In this case, the, the buffer was validated, there is some, some warnings, and then you get a really nice uh, HTML formatted report sent via email. Yeah, but now let's take a closer look how you can integrate your existing stuff you might have. It's still working. Why? To buy a new stuff, you can use your already existing uh, environment. For that, we have created the MTP gateway. Uh, the MTP gateway basically is a nice possibility. You are hardware and software independent, so you might use your, your Windows system or even a Linux uh, device, which can be hardware from Siemens, Turk, uh, or, or other providers of Unix context, for, for, for instance. So you're very independent. The system is connecting to your legacy protocols, to your legacy hardware. We have an own soft PLC based on uh, IEC 611.31 language. And with the MTP editor, we know now you create your template file. And in the same time, it is creating logic code to be run on such a device, which is connecting, which gives you the possibility to have the MTP state model included, connecting your legacy protocols, your legacy tags, and also prepare, prepare the device to be connected to the process orchestration layer via OPT UA protocol. 
So it's a really nice, easy way to integrate existing equipment. A very simple MTP architecture could look like this. So we have here three different types of PEAs of equipment in use, directly connected to hardware. The second one might have a local HMI. All of them are coming with an MTP template. So you simply integrate it, connect it. And this, the third one might be an existing equipment connected via MTP gateway. And in the orchestration, there is a central server where you also can do engineering with a, with a database and reporting included. Now, of course, you can extend if you like those uh, architecture because we do that for large customer projects th since years. So you easily can extend it to have a redundancy, seamless redundancy on a central basis. Then there can be a central data storage as well to store your histor historical process alarms and event data. There is a reporting possibility connecting to the data storage, but also connecting other upper layer systems, like if there is a central historian from OCPI, if there is an ERP of SAP or connecting to an MES, like Verum Bas X, by the use of MSI interface, again, standard module included in Xenon, it's standard connectors. Also here we have a solution for you. Additionally, you might use some additional clients, also no problem here, and an additional workstation to do engineering also in your office or the orchestrating stuff in your office. All right, by the way, I was asked by marketing to do some advertisement as well. We are on the Achema 2022, would be a pleasure for me to meet you there, uh, August 22 till August 26, Hall 11. So we have a, a lot of PEA suppliers also on our booth. You can try the orchestration, we can have a chat there. All right, I think it's enough with the slides. Let's have a look at the real stuff. Um, what you see here is the MTP studio from MTP editing, creation of MTP file to orchestration and starting a real control system. So we will show this live now. And now I'm happy to introduce Matthias Lackner, my colleague. He will take over. Matthias, please show us what we have done. Thank you, Bernhard. So let me quickly bring up Sinon here. So what I will show you today is a brief introduction into our MTP studio. When you start up the application, uh, you can first select where you want to store your data. This can either be uh, an existing Xenon database, which is of course installed when you install Xenon, or also any other SQL database server. For now, I'm going to stick with my existing one here and I just hit connect. So now I'm good to go. And you see, we divided the application into different parts which means you can perform different tasks with it. Let me right jump into the MTP editor. With this editor, you can either create a completely new MTP file or also open an existing one. So for now, I will go with a simple buffer and right away, um, you will see some basic information about this thing. Um, but we are for our demo, more interested in the services of this MTP. So such an MTP consists of services. They are at the heart of the MTP and they more or less describe the high level functionality which is available by the device. Such a service has procedures and both the services and the procedures are controlled by parameters. Let me just maximize this here. Um, of course, you can edit everything in here just by selecting it, um, but you can also add something. So for example, let's add a parameter here. You will then have to select the data type. Such data types are predefined by the MTP specification. So for our demo, I will choose a simple analog display here and give our new parameter a name. So you see our parameter popped up here and you also see the data type of it. This data type, this analog display or under view here is in reality a data assembly. Such data assemblies um, are also at the core of MTP. They are following their specification and everything which you see here is basically linked to such a data assembly. They are required to describe what this parameter is now doing. You can either 
edit them by following this variables tab over here. Or since everything is linked together in MTP, you can also use our navigation feature. So in this case, the application switched the tabs for you. We are now on the variables tab and our demo uh, data assembly is now pre-selected. Here you see a list of all the data assemblies. As I said, this is our new created demo parameter or the data assembly which is linked to it. And since this is selected, you also see all of its properties here. Those are not yet the real variables which you will have in your Xenon project later on. They are stored somewhere else, also defined by MTP this way. And you can find them again by following the links here. So we switch tabs again. We are now in the server tab. And you see we have exactly one OPC UA server over here with a lot of data items. Of course, if you create such an MTP file or edit an existing one, it is sometimes quite hard to get everything uh, right. Therefore, we have the previously mentioned live validation in here. So if I configure something invalid, you will see an error right here. The good thing about that is that you not only see this here for the selected item, but also in higher level entities. So this means, for example, on the server level, we will also see the same error. And if we change here to another data item, which has no errors in it, then we can simply go to the server, click on the header here, and this will lead us to the faulty data item. So this is really easy to use if you want to correct a long list of data items, for example, or any other entities in the MTP. Um, this makes it quite convenient to find the errors actually. Of course, you can also edit the HMI representation of such an MTP file. So um, we also provide you the ability to draw something, resize them, of course. Um, you could actually also add other ports here and also connect them. In this case, I can't connect those two ports here because again, the application prevents you from uh, doing something invalid. So the red bar at the bottom shows you why this is not possible at the moment. So you can just do things which are um, okay to do. And again, if I maybe just put another visual object here, then you see, again, we have a live validation. This is for all the entities which you saw before. But if you want to see a list, a complete list of all the errors and warnings, you can also click this button over here at any time. And this will generate um, a validation report for you. So you get some basic information about the MTP together with a detailed list of all the problems which were found by the application. And as Bernhard mentioned before, in addition to that, we also have this online validation tool now available. So you can upload your own MTP files and get such a validation report like this one, um, of course, for free. But enough of that, um, let me move over to um, show you how you can actually import such an MTP into Xenon. So I switch here to the manage MTP and SOT task. And in here, you see, I already have one MTP inside our application. You also see this here in Xenon already. When I now import or load another MTP here, then you see you get a nice representation of the HMI view of this MTP together with some basic information. And again, um, something like the services and parameters of this MTP. Those are quite important. You will see them multiple times in our demo. As I said before, they are at the heart of MTP. So to actually get this now into Xenon, all we have to do is just to click on import. So what this is doing now is that is it is creating a smart object template in Xenon. And not only that, it um, also creates all the entities which are required to represent this MTP in Xenon. 
So this creates variables, screens, um, symbols, frames, and so on. And in just a moment, it should be ready. And you see, we have here now our buffer imported. So we have our templates ready, but now we also want to represent our real world devices. So therefore, I create instances of those templates. And I just want to call them a little bit different for demo later on. And so that our live demo later on is working, I also have to change here the OPC UA namespace index. So then I can save it. And basically, now I have my instances defined. All I can do now is put the puzzle pieces together. So I change to the process orchestration. And in here, nothing is in here. So I create a new POL project. In this POL project, I simply use my new instances, drag them here on the canvas. And then you see why those parameters, which I mentioned before, are so important. Because now you can just connect one PA to another PA by just drawing lines. And also these PAs um, provide ports for MS flow. Therefore, I will also connect this one here. Um, what you see here is just a logical representation. So you connect your PAs here together. But you can also edit the HMI view, which is what you will see later on in Xenon. So let me just arrange this here that it looks good. And then let's start the generation. What this is doing now uh, is that it, of course, asks me if I really want to do this now, because this will modify the Xenon project. Um, but this is OK. I want to do this. But now it is going to create the full project for you. So you see it's extremely easy to put together a production line. And just with a few clicks, you hit generate, and everything is basically done for you. While this is generating, this will take some time. Um, I will switch places with my colleague Herbert, who will tell you more about the resulting Xenon project. Thanks. Thank you, Matthias, uh, and also welcome from my side. So while this poll project is uh, generated to the Xenon project, this takes about one minute or so, uh, I will give you some more information about this MTP template project. So it's a Xenon project with a basic uh, framework with navigation with all kinds of Xenon objects like uh, variable screens, uh, frames, and so on, uh, and also templates uh, for archives, templates for reaction matrices, uh, for batch configuration, and so on. So this uh, MTP template project is um, the second major component of our MTP uh, integration into Xenon. You can have here as many project uh, copies uh, as required. So this means if we have, for example, a production area with uh, three production lines, you uh, will then generate for each production line uh, own PUL project. This you would then um, generate in a separate uh, Xenon project. Uh, and uh, you can, of course, activate their the network feature, meaning so, so a client model, or also the redundancy feature. So uh, you have then a control room where you can monitor or also control all those lines uh, speaking with MTP. So as you can see, the poll project was uh, generated now. We have here this uh, steer and the buffer. We have here the MTP template. So uh, the MTP template project is on the one hand the place where the poll project is generated to, but it also serves uh, for configuration uh, in order to define how the smart object templates, which are generated by the MTP import, uh, uh, look like. So we have here the smart object template called MTP template. This is a kind of master template which uh, contains all possible assembly types which uh, the MTP standard defines. So for example, we have seen on objects like screens, 
prepared for it, uh, symbols, variables, and so on. We can open this screen, for example. This is uh, the, the process screen uh, for the analog drive. Um, you have here the possibility, so the customer has here the possibility to, for example, arrange things, uh, also, or, or also to add signals, uh, maybe uh, to implement the corporate identity and, uh, and so on. Uh, the only thing uh, what he has to do afterwards is to export uh, this uh, changed Xenon object to a given file path and uh, the next time when the Xenon uh, um, MTP import is uh, triggered then it will have then the new style. So this template project uh, concept is also uh, implemented on the project side. This means for example for archives we have uh, templates uh, available and also for the batch control the customer can here modify his uh, things he needs and the next time for example when the when the poll project is generated then it will have the requested feature so uh, when the poll project is uh, finished it also um, modifies screens navigation screens and uh, creates archives, creates uh, OPC UA drivers and so on. You see here also the generated um, uh, main screen, the main view. Uh, well, this looks more or less the same like uh, Matthias uh, uh, did the layout here. We will now simply do here some copy and paste action for uh, some small animation icons. I think this should be okay. Save it. And um, while I'm starting the, the service engine and compiling the project, I will tell you now uh, a little bit more about the batch configuration which, which was automatically created. So we have here for each PA, we have created a batch unit. Uh, and for each service, which is defined within the MTP, uh, a batch uh, phase was created. And for each um, service procedure, a control strategy was created. We maybe can already switch to the scene around them. Now it takes a little bit. So uh, at the meantime, I will show you also the OPC UA drivers which have been created. Those are pointing now in this demo to a local simulation. Uh, I can explain it uh, afterwards a bit, uh, where this uh, OPC UA driver connects to our um, MTP gateway. And to this MTP gateway below, there is a, a simulation um, realized via Xenon logic. So we have here now the, the Xenon uh, service engine. Um, you can see here the steerer and the buffer. It's the same view with the, the same layout uh, as shown before. We have here actors like motors attached to it or waves and also logical, the services connected uh, to, the, to this uh, unit. Uh, also, this is also done for the, for the buffer. We have here the visual objects where when we click on it, we have here this uh, control screen as shown with the unlocked drive before. We can, uh, for example, also uh, manually control them by, starting uh, them uh, via this screen and also monitor the, uh, the signals coming from the, uh, from the PLC. This is also, um, uh, this is also uh, realized by every uh, other uh, data assembly type for the waves and uh, also for the, the steerer. Uh, for, for the services. So uh, as you maybe know, uh, MTP, uh, the services are realized by a so-called service state machine. 
which uh, can be of course also um, manually controlled. We can just start here, for example, the service, this steering service. And uh, below the service, we, uh, you have here all uh, service procedures linked to this service. And when you click on this uh, given service procedure, you have all service um, parameters linked to the service procedure. We have here the control, uh, the configuration parameter also, a kind of view, um, and so on. But we do not want to manually control our plant. Instead, we want to um, do this automatically. And this we do via the batch configuration. So we have here the possibility to open the batch editor. We have here already a batch, a master batch recipe imported available. So this uh, represents more or less the view uh, also on the left. We have here some initialization of variables, starting archives and so on. We have here the steering service of the steerer. It's, um, it's uh, not a self-completing service procedure. Thus, we have a transition afterwards where we uh, can say then if the uh, duration of um, of um, 10 seconds is reached, then this uh, service is completed. Also for the heating service of the buffer, we have here um, a set point temperature of 55. When it's reached, the service is completed. And uh, last but not least, we have uh, the cleaning service of the steerer, which is a self-completing uh, pr service procedure. It would automatically complete after five seconds. And at the end, the the archives are closed. So we start this. Oh, that's not good. This one works. So we switch to this test mode and we can start this one. Uh, yeah, this is a live demonstration, so sorry for this. Um, uh, as you can see here, I have a, a service overview where you can see all services. Uh, for batch uh, execution, we need to have all services in, on automatic. We checked it, we can give you now the name for the patch. And we start it. And we can see this uh, steering service is starting for uh, the duration of 10 seconds. You can see the animation I, I copied and pasted uh, before. Uh, after 10 seconds, this one is completed. The buffer takes over the heating service. It will uh, complete after the actual temperature, uh, temperature reaches the separate temperature. And finally, the cleaning service will uh, be executed for five seconds and then the batch is closed. There would be uh, a lot of more things to show the dashboard uh, trending with Gantt, uh, the audit trail where you can see everything. But unfortunately, we are already uh, running out of time. So I got some uh, signs from my colleagues. So I have to hurry up. Uh, so I will now uh, hand over to Christoph Franzke, which is our uh, MTP expert in Cooperative Germany. Uh, and he will tell you some really cool stuff uh, regarding MTP in the real world. One second, please. Christoph, please. So, let's try if I have control. Yes. Hello. Great to have you here. You made the right decision today to inform yourself about the latest trends in our industry. My name is Christoph Franzke. I'm a senior technical consultant and do work for Copper Data Germany, uh, where we had the opportunity to implement the latest technology together with Merck in the last two years. Oops. 
if you look with me at the chemical and pharmaceutical industry today, you will notice that product life cycles are becoming shorter and shorter. And if you're looking for a solution for easy creation and modification of plant configurations, if you're looking for fast upscaling from laboratory to production, and if you're looking forward to reduce your time to market by 50%, you came to the right place today. Please join me and let's enjoy the next eight to 10 minutes together and hear about our great success in collaboration with Merck Darmstadt. As said, product life cycles are becoming shorter and shorter. And so Mac was looking for a new solution. They wanted an easy solution to create and modify plant configurations. And they wanted a fast upscaling from laboratory to production. Merck's laboratory building houses approximately 120 fume hoods equipped with laboratory equipment such as pumps, stirrers, dosing modules, chillers, and all that stuff. And in the past, tests with different modules have been carried out manually. And then later with the use of conventional laboratory control systems, but with a lack in uh, flexibility. And lack in flexibility is not a good thing, especially here, because nowhere else is as much dynamics as in a laboratory. Experiments are rebuilt there almost every day. And this frequent rebuilding affords a lot of time investment and high costs. Modularization based on MTP was the game-changing technology here. The goal was to enable the lab technicians to integrate and automate the required modules themselves and with no need of programming knowledge. Let's have a basic overview of the architecture we implemented to cope with these demands. Basically, we have three levels. We have the xenon pole in the center, and we have the modules and equipment below, and uh, the project engineering stations and clients are shown on top here. And to complete this picture, we also have the reporting services, which are here on the right. And for the laboratory equipment, we have used different hardware to transform the lab equipment to MTP-enabled devices. And regardless of the used hardware, we used Xenon Logic as our enabling technology here. With Xenon Logic, we enabled all the lab equipment for the MTP technology, which we used then to easily orchestrate uh, the equipment with our Xenon Pole. Let's have a look where this great success happens. This is it from the outside. And, oops, this is it from the inside. After the successful completion of a pilot project, we automated the first 60 of 120 fume hoods. A fume hood is what we can see on the left with a glass door in front. And um, yeah, 60 fume hoods already are automated with the xenon pole in this laboratory we're currently looking at right at this moment. And you might think, am I ready for MTP? So if you're not sure whether MTP is for you, let's be honest, you're by means in good company with the associate director of process development at Merck. At first, he did not even consider MTP. But now, today, we look back at a great collaboration and an even greater success with uh, Xenon Paul and MTP here in the laboratory field. I said it already, but we'll say it again with a little pride. We have 60 Paul uh, with Xenon MTP poles up and running here. And we're looking forward to continue our great collaboration in the next years. Now, before time is over, let's look at some screenshots together from the incubation at Merck, implementation at Merck. I have to drink a little bit. Ah, let's try from talking. So due to the NDA, I'm not allowed to show you everything, but you will get a good overall idea from the following screenshots. Let's go quickly through them. Uh, most of the screens you may already know from the presentation before, maybe just in another look and feel. So just to be uh, clear, all this is automatically generated uh, for you, just uh, just plug and play, including everything like the, the process overview screen here, including data storage or historian, as you may call it, including alarming and audit trail, a chronological event, event list, all that stuff. We have the process screen here. We have manual equipment control here, 
we have oops, manual control of the services as shown on the right here. So if it's too fast, the presentation will be sent out to you afterwards and you can have a close look. And we have, of course, the Xenon batch module as we've seen it in the presentation before. Oh yes, the, the, this is the chronological event list and uh, the alarm message list looks kind of the same. And we have an extended trend screen, like this example here can be modified in color and everything. Just an example to get you a glimpse. So at the end of my presentation, I will sum up the benefits for you. I think you learned about all these benefits already during the presentation so far. We have accelerated uh, time to market. Uh, I cannot emphasize this enough. We have, of course, cost savings and we have a lot of flexibility and all that uh, stuff. So what can you take uh, with you today? I think the most basic message I will give you today at the end of my presentation is we are ready. We are ready for MTP. We are ready for you. And we are far more ready than ever to make your life easier. Thanks for joining in. I'm sure you learned something new today that makes your life easier. Hope you are impressed once again. My name is Christoph Franzke. Please do not hesitate to connect with me on Xing or LinkedIn. You can also reach me through sales at copadata.de. And last but not least, it would also be nice to meet face to face in the town where I was born in Frankfurt at the Ashima this year in the end of August. Bernhard said it already. Please let's meet face to face. We're looking forward to see you there. And now, thanks for the opportunity to talk with you today about this great topic. I'm hand over to Bernhard. I think we do have the possibility now to have a short Q&A session. So if you do have any questions, we would be happy to answer these live right now. Thank you. Christoph, thank you very much for giving us some insights about the real project uh, done in Germany at the Merck Darmstadt. Yes, we have some minutes left. We are quite short in time, but there is already some questions in the chat. Please post some questions in there. I'm sorry, because of the time, we will not be able to answer all of the questions. We will get back to you one by one and answer them uh, directly to you. So let me start with uh, the first question by uh, Dorian. What is the relation difference between MTP and PACML with ESA 88? Uh, Giuseppe, do you want to take this one? Yeah, very quickly, because uh, of course it is uh, not uh, a fast quest, a fast answer, but basically from the uh, PACML state model, uh, ESA 88 PACML state model is quite similar to the MTP state model. So there are so few, so few differences between. But what is the main difference, in my opinion, to understand? Uh, because PACML define uh, tags uh, using OPC UA, for example. Also, in this case, we use OPC UA. But the main difference is that uh, MTP takes care of the plug phase. So, how I can uh, describe the, the services of my, of my module and how can uh, interpret the services I can, uh, I can offer to another, another system, like in this case, the pool. So the description of the services, or the idea of the service description concept, in order to automate the integration. This simplify much more the integration of the equipment comparing to the PACML, where you have a fixed definition of, of services and text. I think this is the main advantage. So covering the plug phase of the of the integration. Okay, that's it for, for the moment. <clears throat> Giuseppe, thank you for providing a fast answer to this question. Uh, next question, is the MTP Studio already available or is it not yet released? Uh, posted by Luisa. Uh, yes, the Studio will be released with the Xenon version 11. This will be at the end of Q2. Then we have, can you also import Xenon in Xenon also MTP files from other automation vendors? Yes, you can do that. Also posted by Luisa. Thanks for this question. Yeah, that's I mean that's a goal of of these standards to have really an independent uh, uh, versions of those files. So if you are also compliant in your system uh, with MTP, then of course we also can import orchestrate them, but also vice versa. So we also can use uh, MTP files of other manufacturers, of course, to orchestrate them and combine them together. That's I mean that's one basic goal to get to make this happen. Uh, by the use of this standard. All right, then we have 
Another question. Do we do we use chain on OPC UA itself or we need to rely on third party like Capware posted by Damish? Uh, yes, we have included OPC UA driver and gateway functionality. This is uh, developed by Copa Data, so you can use the Xenon functionality uh, with OPC UA. There is no third party required in this area. Then uh, we have another question, which is, do you think you also can use in the future uh, this MTP for kind of a filling machine? I think this, this is another question for Giuseppe. Yes, or maybe Christoph, you are, uh, you, if Christoph. you want to, yeah, yeah you can. <laughs> yeah, maybe both, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 of but... course, you can, you can use MTP for a filling machine, you can use it for package units. I mean, uh, you can even use uh, Xenon Logic on some hardware to connect your, your toaster or your microwave with MTP. Yeah, it, yeah that might be an unconventional uh, example, but uh, the idea behind MTP is the, the vend to be vendor independent, yeah? You have MTP files for, for each module, and it doesn't matter what module you use. We have seen at Merck the laboratory, we have uh, small steerers and, and small machines, and even some uh, mini plant machines, which I uh, was not allowed to show. And um, we're talking with other customers about very large modules, yeah? Maybe large as a truck or, or as a container, yeah? So there's, there's no limitation. The MTP file describes your module, no matter what it is. So yes, filling machine, yes, you can do it. Yes, Coffee machine, maybe even also. But the real game changer in, uh, is definitely, to, as, as uh, I can say today, is in process automation. Exactly, it's the first time where we have this interoperability in process automation thanks to this MTP concept. So we can uh, really create an open DCS architecture in this way. Yes. <clears throat> Including the separation between modular engineering and uh, plant engineering. This approach is definitely a game changer, in my opinion, in process automation. Absolutely. Yeah. Completely new possibilities. Yeah. So we have a question here from Peter. Is MTP validator available on premises also? Yes. So the validator is included in the MTP editor. So if you have the MTP Studio licensed on a system, this exactly the same service is included and you can validate your existing files or it's validated during you edit an MTP. For all of those who don't have an MTP editor, you can use the online service and simply validate it there. There is another question from Peter. To which PLCs can MTP Gateway connect to? Is there a complete list of supported PLCs? Yes, if you know Xenon, there is a broad variety of connectivity possibilities we have in Xenon. So there is more than 300 protocols we support so you can directly hook up to different kinds of PLCs, but you also could use bus couplers by the use of, of, of the Xenon Logic, the soft PLC, and you also could use Profinet, Profibus, and so on. So there is a broad variety, and there is, of course, in the documentation, there is a list which we also can send to you, which are the supported protocols. Is MTP Studio an integrated part of the developer license? Question from Alberto. Thank you for that one. Uh, no, it is not included. There will be an own package available, especially for process industry, especially for the MTP and the process orchestration layer. Then again, a question from Peter. Thanks a lot for putting a lot of questions here. Is there any CRC sum code for the MTP XML description files to control if there is any modification in it? That's a very good question. Uh, and we also have asked uh, at Namur about it. Yes, there have to be something like this in the future, but till now it's not covered in the available parts of the standard, so they are still working on it. But we really expect that something like this has to be in there in the future for sure. Do you prepare a detailed online training? Yes, there will be also an online training available also for MTP. Um, yes. That's another question. And here we have a nice question. Um, if 
this MTP concept also can be used on a bigger machines like a filling machine or not uh, just we had the process equipment but also on filling machines yeah this is an interesting question if you look further into the future probably Christoph you can take this question yeah of course of course yeah, it's good to have so much questions it's it's good that you all not just attend uh, but to interact with us that's great let's get in contact and talk about this topic of course MTP is not bound to a specific size of a module yeah if we talk about these PEAs, they can be everything. Yeah? They can be as small as the units we have in the laboratory or the R&D department, but you can also have a, a huge modules like a container with an integrated system. So there's no rules for modularization. You can, you can orchestrate all these modules from small to large in, in one Xenon Pol. Okay, Christoph. Thank you. So, do I understand right? Basically, it could also be a coffee machine. You could automate. Yeah, it could with... be. Could be your coffee machine. Maybe we should have a chat over it. Yes, and oh, okay. connect it. Yeah, like uh, with the MTP gateway. Would be nice to control the services. Okay. So I think that, that's a good point to get to the next question because the question was: My equipment doesn't support MTP. Do I need to buy all new equipment? Question from Raymond. Thank you for that one. Uh, no. Actually, you don't have to buy all new equipment. Uh, as we have shown also in the presentation today, there is the possibility to use our MTP gateway to get your good old working, to say it in that way, or legacy systems uh, to be MTP ready or MTP compliant. So we also have a solution for that one. Does Xenon Skater has trial version which can be tested with different PLCs? Yes, of course, we also have a demo you can download it also on our web page, register, download a trial version, get in touch with us, basically send us an email. There is uh, possibilities to do some tests and we also can provide you. If you have the opportunity, you want to test some MTP files, you want to orchestrate, we also can provide you with a test system in this area. There's another interesting question. Um, you mentioned that the poll is capable of doing central historian. So what type of data storage or what possibilities you have in this area? Thank you for this question, Rick. So probably, Giuseppe, this is one for you. So, um, of course, this is an interesting question because uh, in the process orchestration layer, it's important to have a data storage. So beside the orchestration, the monitoring and all the control of the system, in GMP regulated industry, it's very important to store the data in a proper way, as I said. The funny story is that uh, every module offer the process value or the information you need to be stored automatically when you import it. And so that uh, automatically the story is configured when you create the when you create the orchestration application. So that you don't need to configure an historia because it's automatically created during the creation of the application. So, and then you can store the data in an internal binary file, is binary database in Xenon. You can store your data in a centralized SQL server, or you can store your data in a MongoDB data storage we also provide. So three different possibilities. And then, very important, you can also share the data with, the, as, as Berdan, Berdan mentioned in the architecture. You can share the data with OSIPI, maybe using OPC UA connection. You can share data with using REST API, or you can also, for example, connect directly to PASX using the MSI interface, for example, and sending, for example, the GMP exception directly to, to PASX. So free, you can freely select your preferred integration. Yeah, thank you, Giuseppe. So also here there is uh, quite some possibilities to store your process alarm and event data. Uh, I have a final question here for now. Where could I get support for this software in Mexico? Yes, we have uh, also 30 subsidiaries around the world, so you can get in touch with them. The next subsidiary from Mexico is in Princeton, New Jersey, and uh, they can reach out to you or just get in touch with them. Last chance to put any questions in the chat. If there is no question for now, take the chance, contact us at mtp.cubadata.com. So we think 
that's the end of the presentation. Thank you for joining our web session today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your interest. Let's uh, do some modular automations and modular engineering together. Uh, take care. Have a good day and bye-bye.